Hi guys, I want to look at the uh, differences between advisor titles and advisor licenses. We're talking about investment advisors and how the difference uh, creates loopholes and how those loopholes can cut your retirement in half. So we start with the Securities Act of 1933, goes to 1940, and we're here amended through to 2012, still in effect. The word advisor spelled with an E is what you wish to look for when you're getting an investment advisor as opposed to a broker-dealer. And they are found in the Securities Act. And if you change that search to advisor with an O, you'll find it not found at all because that's just a title and not a license or a duty to you, the customer. Jump up to Canada. We got the Government of Ontario here. 65 matches for advisor with an E. And that's the one you want to be looking for because it's the legal license category with a fiduciary duty. And if you change that search to advisor with an O, you'll find nothing there. Advisor with an O is a title. Go to FINRA. This is a self-regulatory body, so they're not being entirely honest when they title investment advisor representatives. I think they may be trying to claim that all of their people are advisors with or without the license. Go ahead, click on a search here, put in your broker or your advisor's name here, and find out if they're registered as a broker or a real-life advisor with an E. One is a title, one is a license. The Securities and Exchange Commission tells it this way. I don't want you to take my word for it. Here's an investor bulletin making sense of professional titles. Financial professional titles and licenses are not the same thing. A financial professional may use various titles whether or not he or she is registered or licensed. If you have someone who's only a titled advisor, that's usually someone with an O, then you don't have the duties and they have a bunch of loopholes. For instance, not for instance, here's 88 words from SEC Chair Mary Jo White. You can take her word Look for it. At 88 words that allow the investment industry to cheat and shortchange you out of billions. Here's the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. A speech by the Chairman Mary Jo White, March 2014, protecting the retail investor. She does a pretty good job. I'll let you find that yourself at Larry Elford. It takes less than a minute and a half to find it and see the difference between an advisor registered with the SEC or a broker who does not have the fiduciary obligation. The other YouTube video is suitability is what you get when you find an advisor usually spelled with an O, just a titled advisor. They're created by these people from FINRA, self-regulatory. They don't want to be registered as fiduciary advisors, so they have to come up with something to say, we're not brokers, uh, we're not salespersons, we're not on commission. They have to do some, some fancy talking, and what they say is they change the spelling by a little bit and call themselves an advisor with an O instead of the legal licensed advisor with an E. They have a lower standard called suitability, which is uh, uh, the easiest thing in the world to be vague, undefinable, and self-judging by the guy that sells you the stuff, and you can pickpocket a billion dollars a year easily by selling people things that are suitable. Imagine going to a wine expert and saying, well, I only want stuff that's drinkable, or visiting your nicest restaurant in the city and saying, well, bring me anything that's edible. That's what the investment industry is bragging, that they'll only sell you something that's suitable. And it happens to include the, uh, the worst crap that you can package together, sadly. Get a fiduciary. They can't sell you that kind of story or that kind of nonsense. The deception goes on, and it uh, continues into the KYC, which is a Know Your Client form. This is a six-minute video on my same channel on how the KYC can and will be used against you from the very startup of account opening and I've seen that from the side of filling in the KYC to sitting in the courtroom and watching the KYC 
Know Your Client form be used against elderly clients. Find more on this topic at investoradvocates.ca. Don't hold it against me. It's a Canadian site. I cover North America. Look at the grand deception, what we're talking about here, the ability to fool people into thinking they're a licensed advisor when they're just titled. We'll look at self-regulation, how that goes ba bad. We look at um, tricks of the trade, things how your broker is going to get two or more percent out of your investment account, and that's enough to cut your retirement in half. And a good a number of ways on how people are getting their money back when they learn of these misrepresentations, these tricks, these deceptions, and these abuses. They are not in the industry. Uh, they're not allowed in, in common law. The industry likes to get away with them. Find me at Twitter on re at Recovered Broker. And we'll talk some more. There's an active... Um, constituency there trying to make the world a better place find me at investment system fraud there is an active constituency there also trying to make the world a better place and I uh, hope to talk to you again thank you